Hi, this is Angie Woolsey and welcome to another edition of The Amazing Art Show. We have got a super awesome project that we're going to be working on today. Before we get started though, let me give you your supply list. We are going to be needing oil pastels. We are going to also be needing some watercolor paints, a black marker, a brush that is pretty thick, one that you don't mind getting pretty messed up, um, definitely pencil and eraser. And we're also going to be needing something very special for this project, and it is called gesso. And it is a very thick kind of white material, and actually in our next project that we're going to be doing, we will also be needing gesso. So this thing you can use for two projects that are coming up. You can get this gesso pretty much at any of your arts and crafts kind of store. So we will also be needing some of that. And we will also be needing some very thick kind of cardboard kind of paper. This that I'm using right now is actually matte board that you typically frame, you know, artwork with, but I've got some scraps of it and that's what we'll be using. So if you've got some of that around the house, you can use that. If you've got maybe um, some really heavy duty boxes, you could cut off a piece and use that as well. All right, so let's get started. Our feature artist today is Paul Clay. And when you see his name, it's spelled K-L-E-E, -E, so it looks like Clee, but it's actually pronounced Clay. And Paul Clay is a very famous artist, and he was actually born in Switzerland. And he was not only an artist, but a musician and a teacher. He was a very well-rounded guy and had lots of talent. And he really used those different influences in his life to help him with his artwork. And his music also led into his artwork and kind of vice versa. And today's piece that we're going to be looking at of Paul Clay's is called Cat and Bird. So while you're looking at Paul Clay's picture, I want you to notice the very, he has very simplified shapes, and also want you to notice lots of use of color. Paul Clay loved color. It was just his favorite thing. He couldn't get enough of it. And so you're going to see a lot of that in the work that we're going to be looking at today and also in the work that we're going to be doing for our project. And so when you're looking at the picture, I want you to notice those simple shapes, very primitive and simple, simple shapes. And we're going to be using some of those simple shapes today to create our project. So I'd like to, at this time, kind of show you what our final project's going to look like. And that way you can kind of understand the process as we're going through it. So I'm going to show that to you real quick. And this is our rendition of Cat and Bird. And I want you to notice in this picture that the canvas itself is very textured. So it's not smooth like normal paper, but it has a really rough texture to it. And that's where that gesso is going to come in that I was telling you about. So let's get started on our project. All right, you are going to need to grab that big piece of cardboard. I have got mine cut into like a six by 10, and that's a pretty good shape. If you've got a bigger piece, you can, you can do a bigger piece. That will work fine. All right, now with your gesso, this stuff is kind of stinky and it's very messy but boy, is it fun. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna need a big brush and you're just gonna glop it all over this piece of cardboard or thick paper, whatever you can get your hands on. And the object is you don't wanna smooth it out. This isn't like normal painting where you wanna smooth everything out and make it really even and smooth, but you want all those lumps and bumps and all that texture, so that's what we're going for. So usually what I do is I just kind of keep piling it on there until I feel like I've got enough on there that I can really start to smooth it out. So once I get enough on there, just kind of start working it around the edges. And like I said, you know, we don't want this smooth. So use your brush to kind of push the stuff around, but also you can just kind of tap it down and kind of move it around that way. Now, once you get done doing this, this is one of those projects that you're going to have to let this dry, and it will take it a good, good 12 hours to dry. So you want it to, you know, let it dry, lay it in a, a, a flat place, because if you put it on something that's curved, this stuff hardens kind of like, um, kind of like a concrete kind of substance, and so it's going to get really hard. And if you don't have your piece of cardboard laying on something flat, it's going to curve and curl up. And those of you that might be using a, um, a piece of cardboard or something like that, sometimes when you wet cardboard on one side, as it dries, it will begin to kind of fold up like this. 
And the way that you can kind of prevent that from happening is if you will wet the other side, it'll kind of help it to flatten out. So go ahead and put it on there, let it dry, but you may have to come back and wet the other side in order to get it to lay down flat. So we are going to put this to the side and when I get done and it's all dry, I've got this very textured, rough kind of a canvas that we're going to be working on today. Now, this is fun because you've got some really good feely kind of texture on there. However, keep in mind that we're also going to have to draw on it, which also can present some problems. So you're just going to have to work around it the best you can. And keep in mind, we are doing a very simplified cat and bird picture today. So I want you to, you know, when we look back at the picture, you know, look at the shapes that you see in things. My kids are always, oh, I can't draw that. I have such a hard time with it. And I always tell them, break it down into simple shapes. And then you can add other shapes onto it to get the look that you're going for. All right? So keep in mind that simplified shape. And you can start your drawing. And I'm going to trade out. All right. So I'm going to start with my picture. I'm going to start with just that simplified shape, which if you kind of look at the cat's head and you took off the ears, it's just a big old oval kind of shape. So that's what I'm going to start with. If you want your cat to be real furry and heavy furred, you can always come in and add those zigzaggy kind of lines on there. If you want it to be smooth, Paul Clay's picture that you looked at earlier, very smooth. So if you want your cat to be more smooth, you're going to do more of a straight line. If you want it to be more like a real furry kind of cat, like my cat Muffin, she is super fuzzy. So I'm going to do a Muffin kind of rendition. And so I'm going to make mine real kind of a zigzag kind of line. And you want to keep in mind as you're working, you want to work pretty big. But you also have to keep in mind that you need to leave some room because you've got to tuck a little bird in there somewhere. Now, keeping in mind when you're working, you're drawing over this really bumpy texture. So your pencil's going to bump around. So you're probably not going to have a super smooth line, but you can either, you can have a little bit smoother than others. So come in and get your pencil drawing done first. Um, once you get that finished, you know, get those ears in there. And you can also come in and start working on those eyes. And we were, when we looked at our picture, the eye shapes, especially on Paul Clay's, extremely large eyes. So we want really nice big eyes on our cats today. And so we're kind of going to do a pointed kind of oval shape for our eyes. And if you'll use kind of short little strokey marks with your pencil. It'll kind of help you to work around those lumps and bumps a little bit. And usually you want to drop down a little ways to do the nose. And you can make your nose many different shapes. Paul Clay's um, nose on his cat's very simplified shape. I think I'm going to make mine a little different because remember we don't want to copy. We just, you know, we want to get some ideas from it, but we want to make it our own as well. So keep that in mind. And one of my favorite types of lines is the spiral. So I'm going to put my cat, my cat is smiling so much that he's got little spirals on his face. I should say her face because if I'm doing muffin, it's a girl. So, all right, I've got my cat face started here. And I know y'all probably have a hard time seeing this from where you are because of the texture, but trust me, it's there. And we are going to start working on your bird. Now your bird, also very simplified shape. You could make your bird on top of your cat's head. Maybe it's sitting on his nose. It could be to the side. Anywhere you want to put that bird, you can just fit it in there wherever you want to. And also, as you're working, use the texture that you have on your canvas. You know, you could use that texture in certain areas. Like if you wanted, you know, your cat's nose to be a little more raised, Use one of those raised spots to put the nose. So you could definitely do something like that. I think I'm going to use one of my raised spots on here to do my bird's tail and body. So I'm going to just fill this in as best as I can. And remember, we're doing very simplified kind of shapes. So if it's not perfect, it's okay. 
So we've talked before about Pablo Picasso and his abstracted, very simplified kind of shapes. And this is one of those projects where you could also bring that in. Paul Clay, Pablo Picasso, they all use those abstracted, simplified, very primitive kind of shapes. They're not concerned with whether or not it looks exactly like a cat or exactly like a bird or exactly like a person. They're more concerned with what their thoughts and their feelings are that they're trying to convey in their artwork, not about if it looks exactly like a photo or anything like that. So this is one of those projects that you can just really kind of go crazy and really use those simplified shapes and really add some interest to your artwork. So we have got our cat drawn, we've got our bird drawn, and we're ready to start adding our color. Now this part is kind of messy, but lots of fun. So we're going to need our oil pastels, but we're going to be using them a little differently today because, you know, normally we would color them in and everything's solid, but today we're just going to kind of use traces of them. So what I mean by that is, we're, you can start with any color that you want. Um, Paul Clay liked to use lots of yellows and golds and reds and greens and things like that. And like I told you, he was a serious color guy, so he was not afraid to break out any color. But when you get started today, you want to kind of keep in mind, do you want to use those warm kind of colors, you know, maybe those reds and oranges and yellows, or do you want to go more towards the cool end and use the blues and the greens and the purples? You might want to do cool on the outside and warm on the inside. So kind of think about your color combinations that you're going to use, as well as, you know, do you want to use some complementary colors in there that really help each other to stand out and make your artwork stand out. So when I get started today, I think I'm going to start with some yellow, and I'm just going to lay the color down and you do not have to be real precise about this, guys and girls. You can just get that color down there. And it's not going to get all down in the crevices and things that you're used to it covering really well. It's not going to do that. But that's okay because we're going to come back in and actually add some other things. So I've got a darker yellow that I've kind of done on the outside. And I'm coming around the eyes with a little bit of a lighter yellow and I'm going to do a little bit of a red nose. And like I said, it's not gonna fill in all those places and it's okay, just get it in there as best you can. I think I'm gonna do, I don't know what color I want my cat's eyes to be. I'm gonna do little Miss Minnie Muffin green eyes. <laughs> so I'm gonna do some green. Remember we're gonna do the iris, which is the colored part of the eye. So we want to do that. And then inside that, we're going to do the pupil, which is the black area in the eye. And remember that cat's eyes are a little bit different than humans because sometimes their pupil, not only can it you know, vary in size while it's adjusting to the different light, but it can also change shape. <laughs> That's so cool. So sometimes it may be a little bitty circle and sometimes it's like a little slit. So keep in mind, Think about how you would like to do that as far as your cat's eyes go. And get that color all in there. I think I'm gonna do mine like a little line, so kind of like a little slit. Whenever little Miss Minnie Muffin gets her eye like that, she's after something. It's a bug or some, she's playing with something on the floor and she really focuses in and so her pupil concentrates in and gets real thin. So I'm going to continue to add color. Um, think about, you know, your complementary colors and how you might want to use those in your picture. I'm going to put a little bit of blue on the other side of the face. And you're actually going to kind of have to go over some of your pencil lines, especially on the mouth and things like that, and that's okay. Now as I work, I'm going to kind of stop here for a second because I want to kind of show you what we're going to be doing next. We've got the color laid down on here and you can see how you've got lots of holes everywhere and things like that. And that's okay because now comes the messy part. We're going to get our fingers in there and we're going to move it and wiggle it all around. So get your finger and just start kind of pressing that color down. If you get out of the lines a little bit, it's okay. And you can kind of start to smear that color. And if you want it just to stay in just the place you put it, that's fine. Or you can actually, you know, you can bring it out and start working on your background a little bit. Anywhere you would like to come in and add some color. 
and probably want to change fingers whenever you're going into a lighter color because you don't want to get it. If I put my finger that I already had in my blue into my yellow, what am I going to get? I'm going to get some green and I didn't want green there, so change fingers. And so like I said, you can really come in and just smear that color around. I think I'm going to come in maybe down in this area with some orange. And think about, does your cat have stripes? Those might be some things that you want to consider and add. Uh, Paul Clay's cat doesn't really have any stripes. It's a very simple, very simplified cat. But that doesn't mean you can't add some ears. So really move that color around and you can come up with some really interesting kind of color combinations as you're working. And I think I'm going to do a little bit of purple in here because I just think that sounds like that'd be fun. So I'm going to come here and right underneath the eye, maybe creating a little bit of a shadow maybe. And as I'm working, remember that I'm using my fingers to blend. So I'm going to use my blue finger because it's pretty close to being. It's a cool color, so they would be okay if they mixed together a little bit. All right, now we're getting close to being done here with this part. And don't forget, you want to also come in and hit a couple places in your background. So when you get finished, you should have all of your areas colored. Everything should be colored. Don't forget about your bird. I think I'm going to do, I think, I don't know. I think maybe I'm going to do a green bird. <laughs> I know you've never seen a green bird before, but in my picture, there's a green bird. So we're going to do a green bird and lay your color down in there. You might even want to mix a couple colors in there. Maybe your bird is a parrot. So think about that and how you want to get your color in there. You know, I was telling you earlier about how Paul Clay was not only an artist, but he was also a musician. And there was a time in his life where he didn't know if he was going to do art or if he was going to do music. And so it was both of his parents were in music, but he really had a knack for art. And so he kind of flip-flopped a lot of his life deciding what he was going to do and what he wanted to be. And so later on in his life, he, instead of kind of knowing that he had to separate the two, he kind of got to where he would use his love of music and his love of playing, and he would kind of incorporate it into his artwork. And so a lot of times they would say that as he would you know, be working on his artwork, he would be listening to music that would inspire him, inspire the colors and the energy, and really translate that into his artwork. So I like to do that too. I like to listen to music while I work. I think it helps me to do better artwork. So as you guys are working today, I want you to listen to some music that might have been popular during Paul Clay's time might have given him some inspiration to create his cat and bird. And I'm going to continue to work on my picture. And when we get back, we're going to move into the next step. Remember that we have used the oil pastels and now we're coming in with the water paint. Remember that oil and water don't mix. So what's going to happen is the places where you have oil pastel is really going to stand out. The paint color that's mixed with the water is going to seep down into those little cracks and crevices and things like that and add some color from underneath. So as you're starting to add your color, you need to think to yourself, do you want to put the same color over the same color and just kind of intensify it? Or do you want to come in with a completely different color to add a different kind of effect? So kind of play around with that and, you know, as you're working, see what, what you like and how it's going to look. So um, I'm going to start, and I think I'm going to start with a little bit of orange. And I'll show you what I'm talking about, about that contrast. So I'm going to come in here over this blue 
And I'm just kind of, instead of really running my brush over it, I'm really kind of tapping my brush down inside here. And as you're doing this, you're kind of going to have to work in that method of kind of tapping it because it'll help that color to get down in there. So as you can see, as I start to do this and I start to add the orange on top, it makes the blue really stand out. It gives you that really great texture. It kind of makes your cat look furry and textured and fuzzy. So that's kind of the look that we're going for. So you're just going to come in and add whatever colors you want to do. Notice also that I have not, I've not done anything on the center of my cat's eye. And as far as the black goes, don't do that with oil pastel. You're going to have to come back and do that with a black marker after it's dried a little bit. So continue with your painting. Um, you don't have to worry too much about, you know, whether your colors mix together. And don't forget that this would be a really great time to experiment with maybe mixing some new colors. So don't be afraid to do that. So I'm going to take a little green and mix it in with my yellow in here. And come in and really create some vibrant colors. And you can, you know, after you let an area dry, you can even come back over it again and darken it even more. This is giving it a very kind of washed out kind of color, but that's okay. It's still going to show up really well. And keep in mind, you might want to also, you know, decide where there might be a highlight or a shadow on your cat or bird. Maybe you want to do one side a little darker to create a shadow. Maybe some sunlight is coming in and getting on one side of your cat, which would create that highlight effect that I was just talking about. And then on the other side, of course, you would have the shadow. Now, I told you that I was doing my picture after Little Miss Minnie Muffin, my cat, but something very unusual has happened here. I used to have a cat named Pookie, and her face was half one color, half another. And I don't know what happened, but it just happened. So maybe I'm doing Pookie and I didn't know it. I don't know. All right, so I'm going to continue to add my color. And guys, remember how Paul Klee was just, I said it again. Gosh, dang it. Paul Klee. <laughs> okay, back where we were. And remember how we were talking earlier about how Paul Klee was just really super excited about color. So don't be shy when you're adding your color on there. I mean, this can be like your rainbow cat. So really come in with lots of color. Like I said, experiment with what color combinations you want to create. Don't forget you're also going to need to do your background. And don't forget you also have to kind of, I got in a rush there a second and I wasn't really working my brush down in those crevices and it makes a big difference. So slow down and really get your brush in there. I'm going to come in here and I'm working on my bird shape. So I'm doing my bird in a darker color because right now he's kind of faded into my background and I want him to stand out a little bit more. So I'm going to come in there with a little bit of a darker color. And also keep in mind, a good rule of thumb whenever you're creating a piece of artwork is when you're using your colors, you want to try to use them in kind of odd amounts. So what I mean by that is I've got the green here in my cat's eye, and I'm, going to, I'm adding some more green up here, and I've got a little bit of green down here. And so the way that works is, and it's not necessarily with green, but if you use your colors in threes, it helps it when you look at it visually, it helps to let your eye travel around the picture. So that's always a good rule of thumb whenever you're creating something and you're trying to decide what colors you want to use. Think about that rule of thumb of trying to use it three times in your picture somewhere. And it doesn't really matter if it's big or small amounts that you use it in. Just you just want those little hints. And I come in here. And I'm doing 
very different colors over what I used as far as the oil pastel goes. So like I've got oil, blue oil pastel down, but I'm coming back over it with a red. And once again, I've now got the red here and the red on the nose and then the red that's coming up around in this area. And I really want my cat's nose to be red, so I'm gonna keep that same color. And then I think because I want my bird to really stand out, I'm gonna come back in this area with a lighter color. So you have to kind of think through those problems as well. Art is all about problem solving. <laughs> and sometimes you may get yourself in a predicament, but you just have to be smart and think about, all right, I've got myself in a corner, now how can I paint myself out? <laughs> so, come in here with my lighter color and it's gonna help my bird to stand out. And, I wanna be real careful when I'm getting around there because that's not quite dry yet. And I also realized that you can't really see the beak on my bird, that's because I really haven't added it yet, but, the reason why I did that is because it's real hard to do with the oil pastels and the texture that we have on our work. So I'm waiting and I'm gonna come back and do that whenever we come back in with the marker, which is what we're gonna be working on next. And I'm coming in and going back over the green that I used with the oil pastels. Because like I said, I want that to be green. And something else kind of interesting has happened here that I want you to take a look at as well. If your colors start to run in towards each other, just grab a paper towel and you can just blot that up. If you've got anything that you've put down that you're not happy with, you can easily blot it up with a paper towel. It's no big deal. So last little bit, and then we're going to talk about coming in with your marker and really doing those outlines. And I'm trying to keep in mind the rule of the three. And you know, you can also, if you want to, you could work in some pastel kind of looking colors in this as well. You know, mix your white in with it and you get some really nice looking mixes of colors in here as this starts to kind of blend together a little bit. All right, so I am all done with my color, my painting that is, and I'm going to let this dry for a little bit. And like I said, as it dries, you can come in and blot with a paper towel to kind of help it dry a little bit faster. That is just fine. If you want it, the color to be a little bit darker though, let it kind of seep in and really get in there. And then once this is dry, you'll be able to come in. All you'll need is just kind of a magic marker. If you have a, um, a paint marker or something like that, that will also work just fine as well. But you do want to let it dry. So I'm just gonna kind of show you roughly because this may not even work. It's not going to because it's wet. It won't work if it's wet, so don't even try it. So let it dry, and then you're gonna come back in with your black marker and go in and add all those details. So like you wanna go around and work on the outline around your cat's head. You want that to really stand out. Just like in Paul Clay's, you'll see that real fine black line that goes around and details everything. So come in, don't forget, you wanna do your mouth and the eyes, don't forget those um, irises and pupils. We wanna get the black pupil in there. As well as some of those details on your bird, you can go in and add your beak and all that kind of stuff. So after you get done, this piece is one of those that would be awesome to frame. Definitely a piece to keep and to hang on to. And we are just about done for today. And actually our art quote for today is by Paul Clay. One eye sees the other feels. All right, boys and girls, that is it. We are finished for today. I hope that your projects turned out wonderful. And boys and girls, I want you to go out there and make some amazing art.